so they were extremely sensitive they were they were intensely honest to write down the words of hadith and then the period next after the companions after the sahaba ikram were the tabi'in and the taba tabi'in the period of tabi'in and the period of taba tabi'in is well known that from morning till evening were were they calling out call allah wa qala rasulullah that allah has said this and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said this this was the period where memorizers of hadith were very very common and then it was in this period of taba tabi'in which is like 200 years after the death of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that imam malik compiled mota imam malik and this mota imam malik is present till now and this was written down this was written down from all the informations and all the compilations of the companions of the tabi'in and of the taba tabi'in that imam malik compiled his mota imam malik and this mota imam malik was the major source of the basic big books of hadith which was written in the period after this made by bukhari muslim tirmizi ibn maja nisai mustad ahmad abu daud the basic source was mota imam malik so no hadith and no sunnah was lost or redundant and then taken after 3 centuries to be compiled no they were continuously written they were continuously memorized and they were continuously saved down and put down in notebooks and sahifas and moreover Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he says in nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa nahnu lahu lahafizun Allah says we have revealed this zikr and we ourselves shall protect and keep it secured so if Allah announces and promises to keep guard to keep secure the Quran then how how is it possible that he would leave the model of the Quran that is hadith and sunnah unattended and insecure Quran hadith sunnah are all secure all complete and all perfect and then you know what i would i can easily go challenging the people who just say that we will believe in just the quran and we will not believe in hadith and sunnah you can very easily ask them that if you just relate to quran how can you understand and comprehend quran without hadith and sunnah quran can only be understood comprehended and be acted upon in perfection when it is related with hadith and sunnah like if you're just talking about salah in in islam we're just talking about salah what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about salah in quran Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says aqimus salata establish your prayers establish your salah then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says warka'u ma'ar raki'in that is the order and the commandment for the congregational prayers of salah and then Allah says hafiz wal salawat take care of your salah protect your salah this is almost like all what Allah says about salah how when where how are we going to recite what are we going to recite when we are standing when we are prostrating when we are bow down when we are in at tashahhud when we cannot learn and we cannot offer our salah or establish our salah just by relating with quran only and we need to connect with hadith and sunnah to explain all these concepts of the salah similarly about purity allah prophet sallallahu alaihi said at tahur wa shatr al iman purity is half of faith half of belief now all the methods of purifying like wudu like the bath or tayammum the exact procedure the exact method the exact steps we learn from the quran no in complete guidance it is from the hadith and sunnah